There is no chapel on the day on which they hang a man. The chaplain's heart is far too sick, or his face is far too wan. Or there is that written in his eyes which none should look upon. So they kept us close till nigh on noon, and then they rang the bell. And the warders with their jingling keys opened each listening cell. And down the iron stair we tramped each from his separate hell. Out into God's sweet air we went, but not in wanted way. For this man's face was white with fear, and that man's face was grey. And I never saw sad men who looked so wistfully at the day. I never saw sad men who looked with such a wistful eye upon that little tent of blue we prisoners called the sky. And at every careless cloud that passed in happy freedom by. But there were those amongst us all who walked with downcast head, and knew that had each got his due, they should have died instead. He had but killed a thing that lived, whilst they had killed the dead. For he who sins a second time wakes a dead soul to pain, and draws it from its spotted shroud, and makes it bleed again, and makes it bleed great gouts of blood, and makes it bleed in vain. Like ape or clown, in monstrous garb, with crooked arrows starred, silently we went round and round the slippery asphalt yard. Silently we went round and round, and no man spoke a word. Silently we went round and round, and through each hollow mind the memory of dreadful things rushed like a dreadful wind, and horror stalked before each man, and terror crept behind. The warders strutted up and down and kept their herds of brutes. Their uniforms were spick and span, and they wore their Sunday suits. But we knew the work they had been at by the quick climb on their boots. For where a grave had opened wide, there was no grave at all, only a stretch of mud and sand by the hideous prison wall, and a little heap of burning lime that the man should have his paw. For he has a paw, this wretched man, such as few men can claim, deep down below a prison yard, naked for greater shame. He lies with fetters on each foot, wrapped in a sheet of flame. And all the while the burning lime eats flesh and bone away. It eats the brittle bone by night and the soft flesh by day. It eats the flesh and bone by turns, but it eats the heart all way. For three long years they will not sow or root or seedling there. For three long years the unblessed spot will sterile be and bear, and look upon the wandering sky with unreproachful stare. They think a murderer's heart would taint each simple seed they sow. It is not true. God's kindly earth is kindlier than men know. And the red rose would but glow more red, the white rose whiter blow. Out of his mouth a red, red rose, out of his heart a white. For who can say by what strange way Christ brings his will to light since the barren staff the pilgrim bore bloomed in the great Pope's sight? But neither milk, white, rose, nor red may bloom in prison air. The shard, the pebble, and the flint are what they give us there. For flowers have been known to heal a common man's despair. So never will wine red, rose or white, petal by petal fall. On that stretch of mud and sand that lies by the hideous prison wall. To tell the men who tramped the yard that God's son died for all. Yet though the hideous prison wall still hems him round and round, and a spirit may not walk by night that is with fetters bound, and a spirit may but weep that lies in such unholy ground. He is at peace, this wretched man, at peace or will be soon. There is no thing to make him mad, nor does terror walk at noon. For the lampless earth in which he lies has neither sun nor moon. They hanged him as a beast is hanged. They did not even toll a requiem that might have brought rest to his startled soul, but hurriedly they took him out and hid him in a hole. They stripped him of his canvas clothes and gave him to the flies. They mocked the swollen purple throat and the stark and staring eyes, and with laughter loud they heaped the shroud in which their convict lies. 
The chaplain would not kneel to pray by his dishonoured grave, nor mark it with that blessed cross that Christ for sinners gave, because the man was one of those whom Christ came down to save. Yet all is well. He has but passed to life's appointed born, and alien tears will fill for him pity's long broken urn, for his mourners will be outcast men, and outcasts always mourn.